Uh, it is 6.02 on November 28th, 2023. My name is Nick Kremp. I'm the conservation agent here in Levenster. Um, for a start, I just want to remind everyone here to silence any devices that you might have um, so we don't have any interruptions. And while you're doing that, I'll proceed with a roll call of the commissioner's president, uh, Nick Venti. Uh, Mike Seeke. Here. Uh, Robert Seekard. Oh, here. Uh, Jim Chambers. Here. Richard Gullick. Here. And Chuck Raymond. Here. Okay. And absent is Stephanie Quinlan, who is on leave. And with that, I will pass it on to our chair, Chuck Raymond. Thank you, Nicholas. All right, so I will forego the public comments tonight since there are, there's nobody here. Uh -huh. I'm going to skip right past that. And in terms of new hearings, uh, Nick, you want to tell us what's going on with those? Yeah, so basically um, for the hearings, we're supposed to, well, I'm supposed to um, put out legal ads to the newspaper and announce the time and place of the hearings at least five days in advance. So I did that last Tuesday um, before leaving for Thanksgiving break. I was off Wednesday, and I had asked the newspaper to publish them for the following Wednesday. I guess that Wednesday had already been taken up, so they emailed me back and asked if Thursday would be all right, and asked for a confirmation before they went to publish it. But I had already gone on vacation, so I never got that message, and they were never published. So we were unable to proceed with the hearings. Um, but up until today, they all still had uh, no DEP file numbers, so we okay. likely wouldn't been able to make much progress on them anyway. Okay. So, um, so we'll move those, uh, what is under new hearings on this agenda will still be new hearings on the next agenda, which is going to be December 12th. Yeah. So okay. all the applicants have been made aware of that and they will be uh, ready to assist them. All right, thanks. Yeah. Anybody have any questions about that? What were those? Were those the ones mm -hmm. in the, uh, the, the one that developmental Central Street or off beyond Central Street there? Yes, yeah, Brooks Pond. Brooks Pond. Yep. And that one was for, uh, yeah, the other lot 9A, which they had mentioned yep. before. Yep. Um, and the other one was for 544 Union Street, which was just a residential right. property, this driveway expansion. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, those two items. So I expect those two and at least one more NOI on our, our next agenda. Okay. I just wanted to ask, does that happen very often where they're full? No, I... The, the reason that happened is because I normally always just say, please publish this in whatever the next day's newspaper edition is, and they've never been filled up, but that was the first time. Because I always just say the next day, now I'm going to say, please publish in the next day or the next available day, because just that's just never happened before. So Maybe you'll listen on that one, right? What? Learn your lesson on that one. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> sometimes they'll go and publish it without asking, but they were being extra careful this time, so. All right, yeah. good enough. Uh, moving on, so nothing under continued hearings. Um, under regular meeting, the first one, school sewer reroute, uh, um, dangerous species program update. Yep, so um, we had discussed this at the last meeting on November 14th. Um, since then, we've had the Thanksgiving break uh, and all that, so I wasn't anticipating a ton to be done with this. I haven't gotten any updates from DPW, um, but they will need to provide uh, NHESP with uh, more information on that that they have requested. Um, they're still working on getting that together. So, hmm. for the record, will you spell out NHESP? Yes, it is the Natural, Natural Habitat and Endangered Species Program. It's heritage. Natural, Natural Heritage. Natural Heritage. That's it. Right. Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program, uh, which is a subdivision of Fish and Wildlife. Right. Yeah. So, it's a state program. Yeah. Um, and just remind us, what are the endangered species in, in question? Uh, so this is in the area. Major slash threatened. Yeah, this is in the area um, just east of Fall, Samoset, uh, Fallbrook and Samoset schools, mm -hmm. just west, kind of northwest of Lake Samoset. Uh, in that area of Fallbrook, it's all um, priority habitat for wood turtle. Wood turtle. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they need. Um, the two, basically, for anyone that wasn't a part of that discussion or just anyone watching, there was a uh, there's a desire on DPW to reroute the sewer because part of it has been exposed through recent uh, erosion and it's just not um, optimum the current arrangement. So they want to reroute that, eliminate some of the stream crossings, but before they do any work in there, they need to get 
um, approval from natural heritage and endangered species because of that prairie habitat in there. Yep. Nick, Nick talked about that here at the October 24th meeting. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. 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 Can I ask a question? How does that inter interact with MESA? Mm, which is the Massachusetts Endangered Species Association. Right? Association? I think so. Or is the. I'm not familiar with MESA. I think that refers to the Act, Massachusetts Endangered Species Could Act. Be. And I think that's kind of shorthand for a lot of those. Kind of procedures that are set up under that law. If okay. I'm on, if I'm recalling that correctly, I know um, NHESP, which is the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program, is the actual like governmental body that reviews and keeps record of those natural uh, priority habitats for endangered species. The, so. the reason I asked is because during the uh, during the fall, actually when when the Lake Samoset Homeowners Association, property owners association. Mm -hmm. had filed for mm -hmm. the um, yeah. eradication. They had to file, it was for uh, for uh, weed control, mm -hmm. and they had to file another application and pay a fee to MISA. Mm -hmm. So that would tell me it wasn't an act. It was an association or a... Absolutely. Hmm. Um, that's, honestly, that's very new to me. I've, I've been dealing with, with ESP and... and I'll have to, for many years and several. I, I'm formats. just curious. It's yeah, like, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure they had to file for a similar reason because it butts up against that same priority habitat. You know, that's what, yeah. what I'm saying. Who, who would they normally file with? The National Heritage or MISO or everybody that wants to get 50 bucks? Uh, as far as I know, it's just Natural Heritage. Um, Okay. But I'll have to I'll look into that and get some of those specific for you just because I can't recall off the top of my head. But I don't got two of them. You deserve to know that, yeah. And okay. who's the who's the party doing the work here? Is it the It would be the Lemon Sur DPW, Department of Public Works. Mm -hmm. It's a city sewer. Yeah. Um yeah. Yeah, so they would be able to you know, the long run the fewer fewer stream crossings the better. So yeah. But they just need they would need to clear a new access road and all right. that. So. Okay. All right, moving on. Certificate of compliance. Uh, Nick, you said uh, something about the 11 Jewel Drive? Yeah, so I was uh, contacted by an attorney for one of the property owners um, at 11 Jewel Drive uh, because this DEP file number 199 192 had never been closed out, never received a certificate of compliance. So they sent me a request and I pulled out the file, started going through, and then I realized this week that their order of conditions that the this file number um, was done under. The, pre, the Lemonster Commission at the time denied that order for whatever reason, so it was appealed and then the state issued a superseding order. So in an instance like that, we've seen that once or twice before in here, but for some of the newer people, um, or if you can't recall, like when the state issues a superseding order, then they are the ones that need to be sent the request for a certificate of compliance when that gets followed up. So okay. we don't have anything else to do out there. We're unable to issue the certificate of compliance. They need to request uh, that from the state. Okay. So I advise them of that. They're working on that. Um, and there's just nothing for us to do there. So Sounds good. good. Yeah. All right. And the other one, 289 Prospect Street, DP file number 199-736. Yeah, so this is an old sewer connect uh, job that was done on it actually extends from 283 prospect street which is the neighboring property um, and the sewer line ran for a short distance on that property before crossing the property line most of the work was done on 289 prospect street um, along a delineated wetlands um, nothing was actually in the wetland itself uh, but this was again a, a job from years ago, at least a decade ago. Um, so everything has been long since stabilized, um, but I did an inspection of the property. Uh, nothing appeared out of the ordinary. There were no additional alterations. So I would uh, recommend that we approve the certificate of compliance for file number 199-736. Before I ask for a motion, any, any questions for Nick? No? Okay. What was, uh, oh. Go ahead. What, what was uh, what was the work that was done? So they um, excavated a new sewer line from 283. Okay. So it kind of 
jutted off of the house of 283 before crossing the property line. And then I kind of ran along the property line on the 289 side before joining up with an existing sewer line off of some side street I can't remember the name of, but it's along Prospect Street. All this is just west of um, Prospect Park, if you're kind of trying to imagine where this is exactly. Um, but it was just a short sewer line, maybe like 100, 120 feet total, just estimating. Um, connecting to an existing manhole. So, All right. Okay. I will then entertain a motion to approve the certificate of compliance for 289 Prospect Street, DP number 199 736. Well, I'll make that motion. Thank you, Michael. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll take the commission's vote by roll call. Uh, Jim Chambers. Aye. Okay. Uh, Richard Gullick. Aye. Okay. Uh, Nick Benty. Aye. Okay. Michael Seeke. Aye. Okay. Uh, Robert Seeker Aye. and Chuck Rainham. Aye. Uh, motion passes 6 0. <clears throat> right, thank you, Nick. Uh, all right, uh, next on the agenda upcoming notice, notices of intent, uh, 15 Camp Street. What's happening there? Yep. So um, there is Camp Street is a small side road coming off of Westminster Road, which itself is a side road off of North Street. So this is all in North Leominster. Um, there is a small parcel back there with a small existing house. Uh, no one's currently living in, but the owner, James Brennan, has been doing some sort of machine work out there um, for the last, however, last couple of months. Um, I've been going back and forth trying to call him. He's, his company is a New Life Construction, so I've been calling James. James Brennan is the property owner, calling uh, New Life Construction. Finally got in touch with him last week um, and explained to him the situation. That whole area is pretty wet. There's an intermittent stream that kind of runs along the edge of the property. So most of it, if not all of it, is in the buffer zone. Um, I explained to him, you know, any work that has gone on at, up to this point has been unpermitted. And I just asked him to stop at this time until he's able to file a notice of intent with us. Um, and he stated last week when I talked to him on the phone that he's going to be working on that um, because they would very much like to get work started again in springtime uh, for out there. I think from what from what he told me on the phone call, the main issue is flooding in the basement, but that whole lot is really wet, so I'm not really sure what he's going to be proposing, but he definitely needs to, to talk to us before proceeding with work out there. So um, he's going to be getting together a notice of intent for 15 Camp Street in the next couple of months. Okay. I'll provide updates with that as I go. Yeah. Any questions for Nick? But they have stopped work. They have stopped work, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you, Nick. Uh -huh. Moving on, something that you, doesn't come across our desk very often is solar eclipse next April. Yeah. Has anyone heard about the solar eclipse? No. Right across not. the U.S. in April. So back in 2017, there was a solar eclipse that went across the U.S. that got a lot of publicity. There's This is uh, the second one in close succession, but it's the last one in the visible from the continental U.S. until 2044. So it's a big deal, uh, very exciting, very rare event. I think it's a good outreach opportunity for us. It's kind of sure. a not so subtle reminder that we're all kind of on spaceship Earth out here and we need to take care of it. So um, I've reached out to the recreation department. I've talked to some of the people in uh, community development, some of the pe other people that put on events, um, and just, you know, suggesting a very small event. Um, I'm hoping that maybe one or several of you might be available for that day. Um, it is a Monday, April 8th, um, to possibly either Monument Square or at Barrett Park or maybe both uh, or another location. Just kind of sit out for the couple of hours that the eclipse will be happening here. Um, it's not a total eclipse at in Lemonster. The path of totality is going to be actually traveling just north of us. So you'd have to travel to New York or Vermont would be the closest uh, that you can see it from here. Um, but then there's a map of the, of the route. In the yeah, I've got, I got a map uh, hmm. of the, I got a poster with a map on it in my office if you guys want to stop by after. But um, you should be able to see a pretty impressive partial eclipse from here if you have the right glasses. 
And if you have a, a pinhole projector, so I was going to provide one of those, several of the glasses to you know whoever is helping out with this event, and then just kind of grab people walking by, like, hey, have you heard of the eclipse? You want to take a look at it? And then you can look up and see a big chunk taken out of the sun. That would be pretty impressive. For those watching on TV, do not look at the sun directly. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's my own, job, Chuck. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. My only advice mm -hmm. would be, or not advice, suggestion. Mm -hmm. You want to keep it a small event. You might not want to do it in Monument Square. Right. Just an idea. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just envisioning something. I'm open to any suggestions. I'm just envisioning something like a small table or something. Just, yeah. what, yeah. time, what time is this going to when, when, when be visible? So it will... The partial eclipse here will start at about 1.15 uh -huh. on that day, and then the greatest eclipse from here, it's got, it'll cover about 95% of right. the sun, um, but it doesn't get dark until it's a total totality, so you might not even realize that something's going on. Um, but it'll cover 95% of the sun at about 3.30, uh -huh. and then it'll start to you know, lessen after that. But it'll be a couple of hours that you can you know, look up and take a look at it with the glasses or a pinhole projector, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, maybe inspire some Young, young scientific minds and get people thinking about the planet we live on. Yeah, that's cool. And I myself will be traveling to Texas for that day, so I will not be here. So that's why I definitely need you guys to uh, tell about that. Otherwise, I would just be going out myself. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Any other questions for Nick about it? No. Okay. Cool. So thanks again. Yeah, that'll be fun. Super exciting. Yeah. Looking forward to it. I will volunteer. Awesome. I'll try to help too. Cool. Yes. All, All right. right. I'll, so be, I'll, I'll be I'll be reaching out to you guys cool. as we get closer. But just a heads up for that. Dynamite. Thank you. All right, meeting minutes. Um, so there were no minutes for November fourteenth, but uh, I did review and have a few edits and comments for October twenty fourth. Um, anybody have any questions for Nick about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have some comments. <laughs> I, I just want. Did you want to go through now? I went. Okay. Yeah, yes, so you can vote on it. Yeah, yeah no, I just want to make sure I am. Yeah, a few minutes ago, and yeah. you, didn't, you didn't have a chance to look at what I. No, I did. Yes, 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 yes. I couldn't get it to print out the comments mm. that were there, so I just had the edits. <laughs> One of the things, though, okay. was there was a motion made to approve the emergency certification, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. I thought we used the word ratified deliberately. My note said ratified. Mm -hmm. Ratified being a specific. Cool form of approval because we're you don't really approve something that's already been approved by the agent and is, is a done fact right. Right. so a ratification is uh and i had the definition in the comments so i don't know <laughs> whatever here but it's basically um somewhat of an after the fact uh confirmation of approval of something like a treaty agreement you can look up the definition or a constitutional uh, amendment or something, <laughs> but yes, what, what, yes. where it's like we approved um, the things tonight. Yeah, there's some sort of official endorsement, yeah. But the, the emergencies right. Nick approves, we then agree and ratify right. his, his group. So that's why I suggested changing ratify. I am the problem that was in it. Another thing at the and some of this is just you know simple English stuff. Um, I mentioned somewhere no action was taken by the commission. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was the one with the endangered species, the wood turtle. Yes. Yep. Um, but at the end, it mentioned meeting minutes, and it said that the commissioners were not able to review them. So I corrected that because they were reviewed, um, at least the ones for October 10th, and there's a question that remained to be answered, mm -hmm. and so on. So I've changed that part of these minutes. Okay. And with those changes, I'd be glad to make a motion to approve those minutes, if you are uh, also ready. I don't believe I was at that meeting. Okay. So All right. Well, welcome to the state. So, uh, Rich made a, made a motion to approve the minutes for approve or ratify? To approve the minutes for October 24th, 2023, as modified in our online system. That sounds good. Is there, is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Jim. I'll take the commission's vote by roll. Uh, Jim Chambers? Aye. Uh, Richard Gullick? Aye. Nick Venti? Aye. Mike Seeky. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yep. And Robert Seacard. Aye. And uh, Chuck Raymond. Aye. Okay, so we have five ayes, one abstention. Okay. So those, that is passed. And I would like to just reference the um, ratification approval thing. I think I heard basically what 
I'm going to be saying here, but the, the ratification is, yeah, like if I've issued the emergency certification and I'm bringing it to you guys to then vote on after the fact, I'm calling that a ratification. If I'm bringing something ahead of you guys for the first time and I haven't issued anything, then I'm calling that an approval. So I will, I'll make those changes in the minutes. I agree. And as I made that change in these minutes by putting in ratified twice for emergency certification. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because I think. I think one of those might have been an approval, but I'm going to go through and, and double check that before I change it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the first one I had notes for that it was ratified. I just said passed, and my notes for the second one. And then there's a third spot where it does set approval, but I left that one. So just look for approval and ratify. Get them Very good. Thank you. All right. Good. Good. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate it. Well, appreciate the uh, the fine tooth comb. Uh, Nico, is something under commissioner news? Uh, yes, so speaking of emergency certifications, I'm going to be asking you guys to ratify an emergency certificate for work at 208 Pleasant Street. Um, if you guys recall, that is the house on the corner of Pleasant and Colburn Street that um, was all but destroyed in the September flooding event. So the yard got washed away. Um, Everything around the foundation got washed away, so the house is standing with the foundation like half exposed and kind of has been pieces of it have been falling off. I just went over today and the front steps have completely fallen off the front of it. Um, I, the last I had heard about a month ago was that it's unsalvageable and that will probably be torn down, um, but I hadn't heard anything for several weeks after that. This week, uh, Patrick McCarty came into my office and requested an emergency certificate to clean out the debris and stones from the streamway immediately ahead of and after the culvert and whatever they can reach uh, within the culvert. Um, reach with, with what? Uh, just with uh, heavy machinery, um, excavators, whatever. I asked them, one of the conditions I put in this is that there won't be any heavy machinery in the streamway itself. Okay. Um, but this is just to clear debris from the stream and from the culvert in anticipation of future work. Um, they want to get everything as cleaned up as they can before the winter comes through and starts freezing and thawing everything and really tearing it up more than it already is. Um, so if, again, this is just for clearing debris from the streamway and from the culvert. Any other intensive work out there is going to require, um, you know, a more extensive notice of intent. Uh, coming before this commission, so All right. um, so it's a little uncertain whether what the future of that house is going to be. Um, sounds like right now the property owners are going to try and save it, but again, no matter what happens out there, if it gets demolished, if it gets rebuilt, they're going to have to come through with uh, a notice right. of intent before that. Okay. So um, how big is the culvert? You know, um, I, I don't know. It's a box culvert. It is a box culvert. Okay. It's maybe four or five feet across. I can't remember. I've only ever viewed it from the street from right. up above. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions for Nick? No, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Jack. Um, is that the property that the, can, the city was considering eminent domain mm -hmm. to take it? Yep. And they haven't done the, that? There's been no final moves on that. The current property, the previous property owners are still the property owners for that house. Um, so. I, I, I'm not really sure how certain they are of what they're going to be doing, but I think they're just trying everything they can to possibly save the house and, and refurbish it. So. But obviously that chasm has to be filled properly, oh, okay. and yeah, I mean, there's no yeah. way to, to get to the house to be able to right. repair it, right? Yep, yeah, and that's part of this work is because they, they'll obviously need to, like they're going to do some sort of a connection from the culvert under the house itself and connect it to the culvert that's running under the street. Because right now the, the city has rebuilt the street uh, right in front of there and they have a temporary culvert going under there, but it just, the water goes under the street and then opens up into nothing before it kind of eventually finds its way into the culvert again. They're not really sure how it's doing that right now, but that's part of this work is gonna be kind of pulling that away and, okay. see, and seeing what's happening. Because the, the water's not going into the culvert, but when you go around the back and to the backyard where it daylights, it's, it's coming out of the yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So, it's way. Rich, you know, we'll be able to use more fall right? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, you had, a, you had your hand up before? Uh, 
on a different subject, so it should uh, oh, okay. talk about that. I subject. did have a okay. yeah. Sure, mm -hmm. go ahead. Nick, can you help us with um, the end of the emergency? Mm -hmm. um, filing, I thought it was before this in any way. I thought we, they needed a month anyway to come about this, but I think December 14th is the final date. So that unless is they, the, unless they change it. So that's the emergency declaration. So that's separate. The emergency declaration was following the flooding on September 11th. And that was a special circumstance that the state set up to allow um, work to proceed to restore things to how they were previously without any kind of permitting, including emergency certificates. This is needed for any kind of work, um, any kind of short term work at any sort of time outside of you know the special flooding event or anything like that um gotcha so yeah it's a short-term thing they need to get in there and get the work done now um so that's why it's coming under, under the emergency and so, this is the culvert that runs under the house not the one at the street yes yeah. so do we need a motion for this um it will yeah to ratify it okay so uh, now i understand a motion to ratify next Emergency certification for cleaning out the culvert at 208 Pleasant Street as described by the agent. I make that motion. Thank you, Bob. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Let's take the commission's vote by roll call. Uh, Nicholas Venti? Aye. Mike Seeke? Aye. Uh, Robert Seekart? Aye. Jim Chambers? Aye. Uh, Richard Gullick? Aye. And Chuck Ryan? Aye. Okay. Motion passed 6 0. All right. Thank you. And moving on to the next meeting. So our next meeting, which will be the last meeting of the year, um, because the following meeting would be December 26th, which is the day of Christmas, so we're not going to do that. So our last meeting of the year will be December 12th. The filing deadline was this past Friday, November 24th at noon. Um, and then the meeting after that will be January 9th, 2024. And the filing deadline will be December 22nd at noon, 20, December 22nd, 2023. Rich. So we've got a question for you. Sure. Um, can you give us an update or remind me what happened with the appeal to Mass DEP for the one that was the Wildflower uh, Lane. Thank you, Wildflower mm -hmm. Lane. Good question. I was drove by yes. that day. It's been a while. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me, actually, because bef sometime before Thanksgiving break, I'll have to go back and see what the date was exactly, but um, the property owner for that lot, the developer, they they were able to respond uh, to DEP's requests with some sort of information. Um, I haven't seen any response on the other side, uh, which I'm looped into all these emails. So this is a couple of weeks ago. I honestly forgot about it until this point because I haven't seen any communication from the state. Um, but they apparently have responded with, I'm not sure if it's all the information that the state requested. I'm guessing it's either not or the state's still reviewing it. Um, but I did see an email from them a few weeks ago that they had sent to DEP with some of that requested info. So no response from the state yet, um, but I will, I'll look into that and I'll give you guys an update. It's still in the process. Yeah, there hasn't been any approval or any kind of decision, um, but that was the last communication I saw was from the developer to the state, and now we're waiting for the state's decision. So I'll I'll figure what I'll figure out what the uh, status of that is, and give you guys an update on the twenty eighth or on uh, the twelfth of December. Okay. That would be great. And how about also um, was it North Street with the chicken coop? And there was a December deadline as one option. Yes, I believe so it was. Um, can you just let us know at the yes. next meeting yes. what the status is of that? Absolutely. I have not heard any, just as a quick update, I have not heard anything from, from him. So, Because it's whether he was keeping the chickens or not. Right. Yeah. And if he's not, then it's a different deadline than if he cries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what he needed to do. Yeah. All right. I do, did drive by there the other day and it looked like there was a coop being, something being built up next to the house. Um, where one of the spots where we said it would be appropriate. So yeah. I don't know if that's his plan or not, but. I just happened to say something. I don't recall next to the house being one of the options. Well, I thought it was right up the street. Was it? 
you know, yeah. up on the Bay Street, that's the best spot for it, actually. You mean the up on the hill, yeah. Yeah. that yeah. would be good. You were oh. going to measure and make sure mm -hmm. it was a certain distance. Uh, yeah, but well, that's the, check into that also. That's the only part of the property that approached even 50 feet from the well. Yeah. But so, it's it's the yeah. uphill yeah. side away mm -hmm. from the road we parked on. Yes. Yeah. By yes. the main road. Yeah, between the two houses, and that. that yeah, was, that would I, be good. I went by. I went by fast and. Uh, I got a look and I didn't know if it was the next door neighbor doing something or if it was yeah. well over 50 and much better spot. Yeah. Okay. Let us know next meeting. Yeah. I believe that was his, uh, that was his aim was to try and get it rebuilt and that a rebuild came with the later deadline. So if that is what he's doing, then he should have at least a couple more months to get that work done. But I will, I'll yeah. look into that. Give you guys a minute. Yeah, we didn't know where it was going. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. That was it for me. Thank you. Any other Update, Nick. I did a two-year utility of the geomorphology project. Did you? Mm -hmm. yeah. I had a feeling, yeah, when you yeah. said that. Yeah. <laughs> did you have a specific question about that? No, no, and actually with, 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 with rerouting a stream like that, I know, I know that's yeah. a, 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 an expertise that's required for that. I, I, I haven't run into too many ge uh, geomorphology, full wheel geomorphology, so I was. There, there are specific engineering firms that do this. Right. They'll yeah. do that stuff. Yeah. 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 We work with Malone and McBroom in Connecticut. Yep. All righty. Yeah. If there's, not, if there's nothing else, I will then entertain your motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Richard. For a second. I'll second that. Um, yeah. Well, I'll take the rest of the commission's vote by roll call. Or uh, I'll take the entire commission's vote by roll call. Um, Jim Chambers? Aye. Uh, Nicholas Fancy? Aye. Mike Seeky? Aye. Uh, Robert Seacord? Aye. Rich Gullick? Aye. And Chuck Raymond? Aye. All right. Motion adjourns at 6.33. All right.